in this video I will continue to, to talk about extending longevity to infinity and beyond and this is part two. I was talking already about the hypertensive drugs and uh, how we can use it to improve vascular health and extend longevity but now I, I realize it is very important topic I will go to it again. And as always, I recommend you to download this presentation uh, from the link in the description. You can go to the uh, sources for information and decide for yourself uh, and make your own research. And now I uh, present, in this video, I present only introduction. Uh, this is a short video. So let's go. Addressing age-related vascular stiffening. Okay, this again, as I said, Vascular stiffening is probably the most important uh, factor which uh, leads to uh, accelerated aging and, and, or to our aging. And uh, then, uh, uh, then we have to consider this. This is the most important and the best way to invest our time in reverse, to reverse vascular stiffening. So age-related vascular stiffening is a complex process involving multiple factors including changes in the extracellular matrix, vascular smooth muscle cells and endothelium. Understanding these changes is critical for developing uh, strategies to mitigate vascular stiffening and its associated health, health risk. Okay, then extracellular matrix, what is, how, how it is changing. Uh, elastin, a protein responsible for tissue elasticity, is primarily produced during development and its production declines with age. Restoring elastin content and balancing it with collagen remains a significant cha challenge in addressing vascular stiffening. Okay, so you see uh, such a uh, picture that uh, it is uh, showing elastin content, so it is maximum uh, around 25 years old. Uh, uh, individuals, uh, but then it is sharply decreases while uh, 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 collagen is uh, increasing and only in very old age, like 60 years, it is dropping. So we have to understand why uh, this elastin content is dropping uh, It is, uh, and what we can do to, to slow down uh, the uh, degradation of elastin fibers and maybe to produce new elastin fibers and this is important to reverse aging. Okay, then, so what else is happening? Vascular calcification. Uh, uh, vessel wall calcification, another aging aspect, reduces elasticity and it is correlated with aortic uh, calcification, arterial stiffness. Increased oxidized uh, low density lipoprotein content in the elderly is linked to the calcinosis of the arterial wall. So we see that, uh, that how uh, calcification is increasing after age of about 50, 45, 50 years. It is increasing, increasing, increasing. And eventually uh, our arteries are getting uh, like bone tubes. Uh, oxidative stress, what is happening? Uh, what is uh, happening? Oxidative stress with aging stimulate vascular calcification but activating signaling cascades due to decreased uh, mitophagy and autophagy. Bone uh, uh, morphogenic proteins are upregulated in response to oxidative stress, increasing vascular calcification. Okay, so we see here uh, some uh, schematic presentation what is happening and uh, what is the consequences. Nitric oxide deficiency, another problem with aging. Vascular endothelium regulates vascular tone uh, via vascular uh, constriction and vascular dilation uh, controlled by nitric oxide synthase, as this enzyme activation uh, of this enzyme, and uh, by endothelium cells uh, producing and activating this uh, enzyme and release of nitric oxide from uh, uh, oxidation of L-arginine. Reduced nitric oxide bioavailability leads to endothelium dysfunction, impaired vasodilation, and increased arterial stiffness. So this is uh, we see how uh, production of nitric oxide is dropping uh, in uh, men and female. So you see after age of 30, endothelium layer are not uh, able to produce enough nitric oxide, and then we have this uh, 
increase the arterial stiffness and the degradation of the uh, vascular, uh, vascular system. Uh, what else? Uh, Pro-inflammatory state, age uh, induced dysfunction of the endothelium cells and uh, it creates a pro-inflammatory vasoconstrictive state, increasing vascular fibrosis and arterial stiffness. Endothelium dysfunction also boosts oxidative stress by promoting superoxide production. So, you see that uh, what, uh, what creates uh, oxidative stress? It is hyperglycemia, high concentration of the sugar in blood, uh, aging of course, uh, obesity is also very bad uh, factor, smoking, and uh, uh, high concentration of free fatty acids and hypertension. Hypertension is actually related to stiffening of the, uh, of the uh, arteries, but again, it is it creates oxidative stress, and then it, this interconnected process it is uh, it leads to endothelium dysfunction, and the endothelium dis dysfunction again uh, leads to further uh, hypertension. Autophagy decline. What we can tell? Autophagy decreases in aging uh, endothelium cells, increasing oxidative stress in the cells. Pro-autophagy pro, uh, treatment with spermidine uh, reverses a, a large artery stiffening, restores uh, nitric oxide mediated uh, endothelium function and reduces oxidative stress in old mice. This uh, some you can go further in uh, to details uh, in my next video, which is uh, uh, which has references to source of information. But you see that again. Uh, we can increase uh, autophagy, but some supplements like spermidin. Um, changes in vascular smooth muscle cells. The stiffness of vascular uh, smooth muscle cells is influenced by endothelium cells, which regulate vascular tone via nitric oxide synthase uh, in, uh, activity, and the nitric oxide reduces active uh, tone on vascular uh, smooth muscle cells. Uh, counteracting increased bio, uh, wall uh, shear stress with, with, from aging and high blood pressure. What else? Uh, it is not, I, I don't present it here, but mind that uh, stiffness of the vascular smooth muscle cells uh, depends on stiffening of the, uh, of the membrane of the cells, cell membrane. And cell membrane uh, fluidity and uh, elasticity depends on uh, cholesterol content. And cholesterol is necessary to fluidity of the membrane. But if this cholesterol is replaced by phytosterols, phytosterols are sub, uh, substances which uh, uh, we get from uh, plant-based diet, and they replace sterol uh, in uh, this membranes of the cells, especially it is dangerous for red blood cells. So it is again uh, that uh, stiffening of not only uh, red blood cells but also vascular smooth muscle cells is happening because of a plant-based diet, for example. But again, it is uh, what we can do. Uh, this just indicates that okay, stiffening is increasing. What to do? We can um, talk about this later. Uh, also, uh, some of these uh, vascular smooth muscle cells are. Uh, can can be damaged and can can be uh, it, uh, can die because aging decreases vascular wall cells uh, due to reduced proliferation and chronic inflammation and calcification leading to apoptosis of these cells and then loss of this vascular uh, smooth uh, muscle cells with aging, are, they are replaced by collagen fibers in the arterial wall media and it is increasing vascular stiffness. It is uh, schematically uh, see apoptosis of vascular uh, smooth muscle cells and uh, increased production of uh, increased uh, accumulation of uh, oxidized lipoproteins and also uh, more collagen is produced. Collagen accumulation happens with aging. Uh, the loss of this, uh, of this uh, vascular smooth cells, uh, mus vascular smooth muscle cells and accumulation of collagen fibers contribute to overall stiffening of the arterial wall, leading to reduced elasticity and increased blood, uh, blood pressure. 
So you see, uh, this is uh, this picture relates to muscles, not to the uh, vascular smooth muscle cells, but it is actually uh, quite similar what is happening in aged muscles. You see, we have. Uh, 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 not only accumulation of the collagen fibers uh, inside, but also a collagen cross-linking, which is again contribute to stiffening of the blood uh, vessels and development of fibrosis. Actually, fibrosis to excessive accumulation of collagen. So interesting that antihypertensive drugs uh, can uh, be useful. So antihypertensive drugs primarily is used for hypertension management, may slow aging and improve overall health by reducing cardiovascular disease risk. Interesting, yeah. Managing, managing hypertension maintains blood vessel integrity and flexibility, slowing cardiovascular aging and reducing associated conditions. Interesting, but not all, uh, at least some, some antihypertensive drugs can be beneficial in all the age and especially in uh, combination with other supplements. Uh, common uh, hypertensive drugs, uh, there are here uh, types of the anti-hypertensive drug, you see it's here, it's quite many, uh, different uh, type of drugs uh, and uh, we have to understand what, what we can use and uh, what uh, research is done uh, that shows that we can improve elasticity of the uh, blood vessels with uh, the use of antihypertensive drugs. Combining these drugs with antioxidative supplements and advanced enzymes, advanced bacterial enzymes to destroy this uh, cross-linking of uh, collagen fibers and also accumulated waste in uh, extracellular matrix. And also with senolytics, senolytics are killing senescent cells. So this all, uh, such combination can provide additional benefits. Antihypertensive drugs may also improve lipid profiles, reduce atherosclerosis risk, protect kidney function, preserve cognitive function, and reduce dementia risk by improving cerebral, uh, cerebral blood flow. Yeah, so it's again interesting. So I don't deny that some drugs uh, from pharmaceutical uh, companies can be useful for anti-aging. So one interesting uh, substance, it is minoxidil. Minoxidil, uh, effect of the minoxidil is, minoxidil is known for, uh, for topical use to improve hair growth. It also preserves elastic uh, integrity uh, lamellae in young and adult mice, uh, stimulates elastin synthesis and increases arterial diameter, leading to decreased arterial wall sickness and improved elasticity. I will go into more details in uh, extended uh, video. So, but again, minoxidin is very interesting substance and it, it shows that many benefits to, uh, to use it. Minoxidil treatment can remodel vascular structure, benefiting humans with elastin uh, insufficiency due to age or genetic conditions. Minoxidil, heparin, and retinolic acid enhance elastin expression, so production of elastin, and low-dose oral uh, minoxidil, dairy, uh, only uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 milligrams is very low doses orally decreases uh, hair shedding and increases hair density in women. Okay, that's again, normally it is used topically, but also there were some clinical trials with oral intake of the minoxidil, also interesting results. Combining minoxidil with other drugs uh, in uh, sub of uh, doses may improve uh, aorta elasticity in elderly individuals potentially extending the longevity, uh, uh, also clinical trials are necessary. So there was some experiments, some research with uh, rodents, and there are very interesting um, results. So minoxidil improves uh, elasticity of the blood vessel. You see the structure of the elastin fibers in the blood vessel. But again, it, is, it was done for mice. And uh, for humans, uh, clinical trials are necessary, but we can uh, at least pay attention that minoxidil can be useful. What combination we can uh, consider? What is uh, already known from uh, research, uh, available research? 
Doxycycline, uh, interesting that doxycycline, it is very common antibiotic, it is uh, cheap and available over count, uh, over, uh, without prescription in many countries. So it is interesting that it, it inhibits elastic fiber degradation. Interesting. So it is not improving uh, elasticity, but at least it is slow down degradation of elastic fibers. Fibers. So it is improves elastic fiber integrity, so it's slowing down uh, this uh, uh, stiffening of elastic of uh, aorta. Lozartan, also very common, relatively cheap antihypertensive drug. It is reducing, uh, reduces collagen content. So it is if you have uh, uh, excessive accumulation of collagen, Lozartan may improve uh, aorta elasticity. There was some interesting research and that will go to references uh, uh, and more details later. Minoxidil stimulates uh, elastin synthesis, which is very uncommon, and also it is promotes uh, vasodilation. So you see such uh, substances are very interesting. We may consider them uh, to use them in combination. Synergistic be uh, benefits of Lozartan and spirona Spironolactone. Spironolactone it is another antihypertensive uh, substance. It is, you see uh, the structure of Lozartan and spina, uh, uh, Spinolactone, a different, little bit different substances, but they, they work both to reduce blood pressure. But interesting that in combination they provide synergistic benefits improving elasticity of aorta and reducing collagen content in mice. Mice were genetically modifi modified to have uh, this uh, de deficiency of elastin fibers. So it is again interesting, um, however, clinical trials are necessary. Okay, so uh, this is enough for introduction and uh, please download presentation, read this. You can go to references, you can decide for yourself. It is, I'm not uh, given some recommendation in this, uh, how to combine this or that, maybe at least uh, something what uh, I uh, can um, derive from scientific publication, I ca can say, okay, maybe I, and I use, personally, I use it, and I think uh, start with some benefits for my health. Okay, have a wonderful day, ciao, ciao.